concluded on the 31st of August 1946. 403 open sessions of the tribunal have been held. 33 witnesses gave evidence orally for the prosecution against the individual defendants. And 61 witnesses, in addition to 19 of the defendants, gave evidence for the defense. A further 143 witnesses gave evidence for the defense by means of written answers to interrogatories. The tribunal appointed commissioners to hear evidence relating to the organizations, numbered several thousand complete stenographic record of everything said in court has been made, as well as an electrical recording of all the proceedings. Copies of all the documents put in evidence by the prosecution have been supplied to the defense in the German language. The applications made by the defendants for the production of witnesses and documents raise serious problems in some instances on account of the unsettled state of the country. It was also necessary to limit the number of witnesses to the court in order to have an expeditious hearing in accordance with Article 18C of the Charter. The Tribunal, after examination, granted all those applications which, in its opinion, were relevant to the defense of any defendant or named group or organization and were not cumulative. Facilities were provided for obtaining those witnesses and documents which should include, but not be limited to, murder, ill treatment, or deportation to slave labor, or for any other purpose, the civilian population of or in occupied territory, murder or ill treatment of prisoners of war or persons on the seas, killing of hostages, plunder of public or private property, wanton destruction of cities, towns, or villages, or devastation not justified by military necessity. C. Crimes against humanity, namely murder, extermination, enslavement, deportation, and other inhumane acts committed against any civilian population before or during the war, or persecutions on political, racial, or religious grounds, in execution of or in connection with any crime within the jurisdiction of the Tribunal, whether or not in violation of the domestic law of the country where perpetrated. Leaders, organizers, instigators, and accomplices participating in the formulation or execution of a common plan or conspiracy to commit any of the foregoing crimes are responsible for all acts performed by any persons in execution of such plan. These provisions are binding upon the Tribunal as the law to be applied to the case. The Tribunal will later discuss them in more detail, but before doing so, it is necessary to review the facts. For the purpose of showing the background of the aggressive war and war crimes charged in the indictment, the Tribunal will begin by reviewing some of the events that followed the First World War, and in particular, by tracing the growth of the Nazi party and the conclusion of the armistice, which ended the First World War. And six months before the signing of the peace treaties at Versailles, there came into being in Germany a small political party called the German Labour Party. On the 12th of September, 1919, Adolf Hitler became a member of this party, and at the first public meeting held in Munich on the 24th of February, 1920, he announced the party's program. That program, which remained unaltered until the party was dissolved in 1945, consisted of 25 points, of which 
which the following five are of particular interest on account of the light they throw on the matters with which the tribunal is concerned. Point one, we demand the unification of all Germans in the greater Germany on the basis of the right of self-determination of people. Point two, we demand equality of rights for the German people in respect to the other nations. Abrogation of the peace treaties of Versailles and Saint-Germain. Point three, we demand land and territory for the sustenance of our people and the colonization of our surplus population. Point four, only a member of the race can be a citizen. A member of the race can only be one who is of German blood without consideration of creed. Consequently, no Jew can be a member of the race. Point 22, we demand abolition of the mercenary troops and formation of a national army. Of these aims, the one which seems to have been regarded as the most important and which figured in almost every public speech was the removal of the disgrace of the armistice and the restrictions of the peace treaties of Versailles and Saint-Germain. In a typical speech at Munich on the 13th of April 1923, for example, Hitler said with regard to the Treaty of Versailles, the treaty was made in order to bring 20 million Germans to their deaths and to ruin the German nation. At its foundation, our movement formulated three demands. One, setting aside of the peace treaty. Two, unification of all Germans. Three, land and soil to feed our nation. 